pinching their soul? I'm talking to the soul? One girl went across, I don't know how many platforms. Like, I need to speak to you. I need to speak to you. People on my site messaging me. I need to speak to you. And I don't even have any fucking clue what I have to speak to you about. But I got to speak to you because I'm feeling you. Like, you're talking to me. I had even one guy who bought my book. He's like, oh my God, my perspective is fucking changing. You've just changed my life. I'm, I'm letting you guys know, like, if it wasn't about my mascara right now, I would just be flooding. You guys are fucking so dope, man. You don't know what you're fucking doing to me. Okay, so um, let's get on with today's message. Uh, it's kind of deep. You know, I like to roll deep. So here we go. A little ambiance, please. Guys, you guys fucking make me emotional. Let's just go back down now. During this pandemic that's going on, it's cracked open a higher consciousness, which is an invitation, an initiation to a higher frequency of living. And at first when this pandemic happened, everybody was resisting. Everybody had to be forced into stillness. But what happened when that forced stillness came to you is your insides became clear and fucking loud and that's what unity consciousness means it means you have to get right with yourself like now so a lot of you have an inner prompting that's lack of a better word waking you up you're having thoughts like I'm supposed to do something. I'm supposed to do something important. I'm supposed to do something big. I don't know. I'm a messenger. I know I am. I'm supposed to help people with what it is that I do. And you fucking are. Good morning. And you need to do it now. So I speak to all you that have had this inner calling. You are the old souls on the planet. The ones that just know things. You see things. You see things whether you're 20 or you're 40 or you're 100. You just know what you know. You've collected all these many experiences by being here so many, many times on this planet. You may have even had a vision since you were a child. Being a hero, you may have had the word heroine, hero. I have to do something with people. I remember when I was in acting class and I was acting out a scene and I was improv and everybody clapped and the teacher's like, what are you telling? What are you, what are you thinking? And I said to my teacher, I'm telling my people, I said people, who talks like that? You guys do. You guys have always had a rescue element in your equation. That's why you overextend giving your insight to people around the job to your neighbor, to whoever needs it, because it's so easy for you. But what you don't realize is you're leaking light. You're leaking your power. Because that's not the stage, nowhere near big enough the stage that you're supposed to step onto. And it fucking pisses me off when all you do is get sucked dry of your power, of your abilities, of your light, doing it the wrong way because you have no idea what's going on. You will always have a sense of a leadership within your blood. I auditioned for Nancy in Oliver Twist when I was 12. I got the old man. I got Fagin. Why did they give me Fagin? Well, it could explain when I was 12 years old, why there was 28 guys 
in front of my garage on their bikes. And I was talking to them daily, all from my class. When a babysitter lady would come pick me up, she'd say to my mother, you know, Nicole's like talking to a lot of guys out there. And my mother would say, yeah, she's talking to them about life, about their girlfriend issues. You would have done things like that. You would have picked all kinds of things, or it would have picked you. You could have been in a class where you're acting an Edwardian salon, Queen Victoria, Duchess, Dukes, and stuff like that. And quite frankly, when it happened to me, I signed up for the maid that picks up the cat shit. I didn't want to do all this fucking work. But then the teacher said to me, no, Nicole, you are Queen Victoria. I don't want to fucking be Queen Victoria. I want to be the maid who picks up the cat shit, or I am going to pick up the cat shit while I'm Queen Victoria. And I did, but he answered, that's who you are inside. And that's who you are inside. Spiritual royalty. Don't fucking squander it. There'll be clues all over. And the reason why, and this is what's most important, Right now, during the pandemic, it has operated like a time lock for you. This frequency, this hell that everybody's going through is your time lock that unlocks your power. That's why, and it's kind of like Cinderella and release, in reverse and release, you're not turning into a pumpkin. You're, you've been a pumpkin all this, all this time. People carving their ideas of what you are supposed to be, scooping your insides out, feeding off you. You're no longer a pumpkin. Now, the magic begins, right now. Sorry, next page. But here's what's going on right now. Even though a lot of you have started to think, what am I going to do? I got to do something. I'm pulled. I'm pulled. But you're still attached to people who muffle your sound, muffle your frequency, cause a lot of static. You'll notice because you're tired. You're drained. Right now, a lot of you are just fucking exhausted. You don't know why the fuck? This is why the fuck? It also, not only are you still attached to people who muffle your sound, your tone, your frequency, but you're also pulled, since you're in that mode, to things that numb you, that dull in your senses, that keep you in a match to what those people are co-mingling with your energy creates with inside of you. And I'm going to explain to it this way. A couple days ago, I was lying on my bed and I was having this summer-like song. You know, the kind of song that makes you feel happy inside. It takes you back to when you were eight or 11, where you're just looking at the sky. And I remember I was lying on my bed and I had this big smile on my face. And I, I saw my future. Like I saw an event and I saw me somewhere else in this big, big place, big, big home, big glass sofa with a lot of friends laughing my ass off. And I remembered, and this is strange for me because I've never had this. I've never had a bunch of friends. I've been on my own, a lone wolf, like a lot of you. I've had people, I've had clients, I've had producers, directors, executives, boss people who took me under their wing and wanted to keep me close because I was like their compass. 
And I gave them a lot of clarity and insight about what was going on, what was around the corner, where they were stuck and all this shit like you've done. And so to laugh with my own tribe, with my own people, to just have this joy, I, I've never had. So I saw it. And as I watched it, I heard a loud voice say, not allowed, not allowed. And I watched myself laughing, having a great time. And I, and I stayed with it, not allowed. And when I asked like, why not allowed? I saw a picture of my mother. And then when I saw the picture of my mother, I heard a couple of terms were contract, a marriage, betrayal, loyalty, broken. And I realized that my bond with my mother and her suffering in her life, and she never said to me, I'm suffering for you and this and that. She never said that. She inspired me. She wanted me to be a success. But there was a silent bond that took place that I had not known. It was inside all this time. And so that's why a lot of you have felt like certain things forget out of reach, but it's more like you're fucking behind the fence and you're looking, but you know you can't have, but you don't know why you can't have, but it's a feeling. So I invite you now, I, I invite you because I guarantee you there is guilt. There is guilt and everybody fucking hiding and scurrying and feeling like all hell's about to, to like break loose at this point of the world and you're about to fucking be born. You're about to fucking emerge into the glorious awesomeness of something the world has never seen. This manure is where that lotus flower, which is you, blossoms. It happens now. That's why you're getting this, uh, that's why you're getting this, I'm supposed to do. And this is why simultaneously, you're also staying with the same crowd, having a hard time to fucking cut them off, family included, sticking with the same habits and things that dull in your senses, that keep you kind of lackadaisical. I don't know if that's even a word, but just kind of ho-ho, it's, it's okay. I'm just biding time. Because there is a guilt clause somewhere inside of you. And I suggest you rip it up. And it has to do with one parent. For sure it has to do with one parent. It's not their fault. It's just something that silently happened. And I'm believing that it's happened for every Hayoka or empath. Because I'll tell you right now, you don't use that mystical power. You don't use what you've been born with. It will be turned against you. And that's what's been happening with that extra sensitivity because you're not taking it out and using it you're turning it in because you're not using it so people are using it against you so i need you to ask who are you feeling like you'd be turning your back on right now if you had the most intense joy and success and throne-like lifestyle that your inheritance has destined you for who would you be turning your back on because no matter how they work they never got it no matter what they did for you, they never had it. And they depended on you. They depended on you. And now, whether they're alive or dead, that dependence is still with you. And it's been distorted into a misplaced loyalty for what they never achieved for guilt. 
and also maybe jealous, jealous of you. And it's okay, it's okay. It doesn't have to shock you, some of you might even know. And the hardest thing is that you have been parentalized, which means it feels like inside they were your child. Now, if you had a, an alcoholic parent, most likely you did feel like you were the adult. And they say that happens, that's natural. But I really believe that in another life, they were your child and it's a spillover. That's why it feels so freaking real. That connection, that guilt is keeping that last bit that's numb inside you attached to the things you're doing and the people that are keeping you in that low place. Especially those of you that are doing that kind of a job for a living where you have to go into people to extract them from a darkness, I need you to ask yourself this. At what point do I stop feeling guilty for my gifts? I need to suffer in order to retain them. At what point does my obligation to others take a back seat instead of sitting on my face. At what point does that happen? What do you want to become? What do you need to cut off now? What are you doing when no one's watching that's gonna shock the world, waiting for your gift to the world? Everything you do now will affect the next seven generations. Yep. Don't blame the fucking system. Beat the fucking system. Beat the system. Part two coming right up.